powered by Alienware. Elevate your game with rapid fire, tear free graphics on the new Alienware 25 gaming monitor. Battlefield 1 in the name of the Tsar delivers a slew of new content on the Russian army and the eastern front of World War 1, but most importantly, it adds 6 new frozen battlefields to fight your way across. So to help you to navigate these new areas and dominate your opposition, we've put together a comprehensive guide of quick tips and strategies to help you get started. Of all the new maps, there is perhaps no better showcase of all the new vehicles and environments than the massive map Albion. Set over a collection of icy islands, this map features wide expanses of ocean to sail across, with any of the torpedo equipped assault boats that you can find scattered around the map. There are a number of key locations to take advantage of. For example, on the northern and southern sides of the largest island, there are some massive cannons that can be a huge help when softening up enemy positions from afar. Controlling them is a huge boost for your team, as not only does it let you have some serious firepower, but they also provide you with the best vantage points, as they are the highest locations on the island. However, keep in mind that these cannons are unable to fire up close, meaning that if you're swarmed by the enemy, you're as good as dead. Crossing between the islands can be a risky endeavour. On a boat, you're easily spotted, and while swimming you might be a little bit more stealthy, it does leave you completely defenceless if you're noticed. If you spawn as the Russians, you'll begin on the western mainland, but if you're part of the German forces, you'll get to indulge in some naval warfare as you begin aboard a large ship in the eastern ocean. You'll have to board the smaller landing craft to make your way to the islands and manoeuvre around them. Just watch out for any Russians in assault boats who can bring your invasion to an early end with a well-paced torpedo. It's not just maps on the Eastern Front being delivered in the new DLC. There are also some taking place as part of the bloody Russian Civil War, such as Volga River. If you like driving tanks, this is going to be one of your favourite maps, as there is a heavy emphasis on armoured warfare. The flat terrain and large open spaces make them dominant, and using them effectively is key to victory. Use them strategically to capture less defended points to minimise losses, rather than storming heavily defended areas, where anti-vehicle weapons can make easy work of you. And if you're not the one driving, try to keep them repaired by using the wrench gadget. A destroyed church serves as the centre upon which all the combat revolves around. Situated on the high ground, it grants those players that hold it a clear view over the surrounding area, allowing scouts to fire down upon the enemy from a long range. However, the church itself is not easy to defend. The building is almost entirely destroyed, with just a few walls providing cover. There are numerous entry points and lots of rubble that can be used for cover when assaulting the building. This makes it tough to hold, but if you can keep a grip on this essential point, it's well worth it. If tanks aren't your thing, don't be disappointed, as not all the maps are so vehicle focused. Ruiz Low Keep, for example, is all about up close and personal infantry combat. Teams will take control of the town situated between two bridges, with the southernmost bridge actually being a railroad for the armoured train Behemoth to ride in on. However, keep in mind that those bridges are a death trap if you're trying to cross them on foot. Players in the town have a clear view and there is no cover on the bridge, leaving you completely exposed. If you want to cross the river safely, go down to the riverbed and seek cover behind the bridge's support structures and various boulders littering the landscape. Horses are one of the features on this map, but they are not really worth the effort. The fighting mainly takes place in the town and it's a fairly small map anyway, so generally it's better just to get around on foot rather than hoof. There is also a new armoured car on the map, but much like the horse, it's not really worth trying to get across the bridges with or to drive around the town in. However, it can be used to skip around the outskirts of the map, away from the heavy fighting, to attempt to capture points from behind the enemy lines. I mentioned earlier the Russian Civil War maps, and Sarazin is the second of the two. This is one of the most visually impressive of the maps in the expansion, and it sees players battling over the breathtaking Cathedral of Light in the centre of the map. City ruins lie to the southeast and northwest with a large trench filled no man's land surrounding the cathedral itself. Some areas of the map are cluttered with doorways, windows and upper floors that make it very easy for the enemy to hide and set up an ambush. Be sure to keep your volume up and listen for footsteps. Check your corners and be careful as you try to capture objectives as players could be hiding anywhere. Infantry combat is the focus of this map, but each team also gets a single tank, which is vital to securing a decisive victory. It can be the key to capturing objectives in the urban areas. The cathedral is where the hardest part of the fighting will take place, and there are a few things to keep in mind when you either have control of it or if you're looking to assault it. First is that there are numerous entrances. If one is well protected, just move to another. It's almost impossible to protect them all effectively. Also, when inside the building, you must stand in the centre to capture the control point. Players on the outer rim or upper floors can't capture it. 
Glacier is one of the more traditional maps in the DLC. It's medium sized and one of the flattest maps in the game, peppered with foxholes, trenches and destroyed shacks. Because of this, keeping yourself low to the ground is vital. Standing up makes you stick out like a sore thumb and will likely get your head blown off. Crawl or crouch your way around and make use of any cover that you can find. Vehicles reign supreme on Glacier, and planes in particular can excel by performing bombing runs on grouped up enemies attempting to capture objectives. There are very few buildings to find cover in, so controlling the air is a major part of winning on this map. Sniper rifles and light machine guns are very effective on this map if you can be patient. Many players will eventually tire of sneaking around, and when they try to sprint across the battlefield, you can safely take them out from your foxhole. Lupko Pass is set amongst the snowy hillsides and ravines of the Eastern Front, and fuses infantry combat with cavalry and aerial gameplay. It also features a railroad down the middle, which the armoured train Behemoth can travel down. The map lacks ground vehicles, meaning any players looking to get around faster will want to make good use of the cavalry. The DLC added the cavalry lance for players to use while on horseback, and it's great for running down and skewering enemies along the mountain trails. This map utilises a lot of different heights and elevations, and to play it effectively, you're going to want to claim the high ground. However, if you're stuck at the bottom of the hill, you're going to need to be extra aware of your surroundings, as pinpointing where you're being shot from can be difficult. But if in doubt, probably look up. Nearly every battlefield map involves controlling the centre, but it's particularly important here as the capture points in the middle are quite close together and well linked, meaning they can be protected effectively if you can get enough players into the area. For more information on Battlefield 1's new maps, vehicles and weapons, be sure to check out battlefield1.gamepedia.com. Which of the new maps is your favourite, and do you have any tips to share? Let me know in the comments below. As always, this is James for Curse, saying thanks for watching, and enjoy the game. Powered by Alienware. Elevate your game with rapid-fire, tear-free graphics on the new Alienware 25 gaming monitor.